Hello and welcome. In this episode, we're going to talk about the latest AOSCX UI configuration enhancements. So we're going to go over client roles, HTTP proxy, source interface, uh, how to globally enable SNMP, how to configure concurrent authentication, how to configure user-based tunneling. We're going to take a look at the multi-editor configuration drift warning and how to use managed mode for uh, the Aruba Central uh, how it manages the switch CLI. Basically, it locks you out, uh, similar to how we do it with AOS Switch. And then we'll look at some of our firmware enhancements. So here we have our stack that we created in our previous video, and it is in our group. It is a UI group. And so from here, I can go into the config, and I can see all my options. Now, some of the new ones that we've uh, introduced, which I'll go over, is first one here is the client roles. So these are our user roles that we use at Aruba with our dynamic segmentation solution, as well as just you know, traditionally onboarding users and uh, dynamically assigning port attributes or VLANs to those users. So if we wanted to create a new role, we can click the plus sign, and then we can add in a name, give the role a name if we wanted to. Uh, for a VLAN, we can either create an access or a trunk VLAN. So in this case, we'll go ahead and create an access VLAN. Uh, let's say I wanted to do VLAN 10, so VLAN 10 doesn't exist, and the UI will notify of that. So if we want to use VLAN 10, we're going to have to cancel out, go back, and then we can go into our VLANs, and we'll go ahead and add in VLAN 10 here. So we'll just give that a name of employee, uh, make sure it's up, and go ahead and add it. And so that will be deployed to our switch in the background. So let's go back to our roles. We're going to go back to creating our role. And we're going to name it employee. We'll give it VLAN 10. Uh, we can set the QoS trust mode. We can have it set to trust DSC, DSCP values or COS values. Uh, we're not going to be doing any QoS here, so I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, PoE priority, we can change from low, high to critical. So that will prioritize the port, uh, any devices on that port for PoE. Uh, in case there is a shortage of PoE power, it would, uh, you know, label that port according to the priority that was that it was set. We can automatically, by default, it's checked as an admin edge port for STP. Uh, we can also, from here, turn on user-based tunneling, if we so choose. Uh, but this will have to be configured under dynamic segmentation. Uh, so we'll get back to that in a bit. Uh, we can change the re-authentication period, and we can uh, change the mode, whether we want client or device mode. So if you remember, uh, Maybe if you're familiar with the AOS switch or earlier instances, if you use this a lot in your the switch deployments, uh, client mode is our default. That means that every MAC address, every client on, this, on that port will get authenticated. And device mode would be something for like an IAP, where the IAP would actually get the, or the instant access point would become, would get authenticated first, and then the port would be open for all other clients that go on that port. So that way we're not duplicating any authentication with uh, some, something such as an instant access point. So once we've made the necessary configurations, we can then save the role, and then it is saved in, and written into the configuration. So that's one of the settings that we have. Another one that we've added in is HTTP proxy support. You know, it's an old, definitely older technology, but there's a lot of uh, customers that still use it. So from here, if we so choose, we could set our proxy server that we would want to use. And in this case, I do have one set in my lab. And I'm going to use port 8080, and then I will save that uh, configuration onto my switch. Another one is uh, the source interface command. So we can add in a source interface. Currently, the uh, only source interface that we can currently use is uh, for UBT. Uh, so for user-based tunneling. So if we wanted to select a specific port, if we have an L3 port on there, we can do that. Or for a lag, if we have a, a lag configured, we can use that as a source interface as well. And then uh, for the SNMP settings, we can now globally uh, enable and configure SNMP. And we can enable it on the specific PRF that we'd want to select. So uh, this first phase of using this toggle, we can do the default or management VRF. And then we can configure our communities 
and uh, trap destinations if we so choose, or we can create our SNMP v3 credentials and traps, uh, trap destinations if we so choose. So the main the main difference there is that we can now globally enable and disable uh, SNMP for that. So another new feature uh, enhancement here is we can set up uh, concurrent authentication on a port. So if we have uh, both .1x and MAC authentication uh, that we want to configure, we can configure that because uh, this is a release that came out in uh, CX 10.6, I believe. And from here, we can set the priority whether we want 802.1x or MAC authentication to be first. Uh, any client limit that we want to set on the port, and then we can set uh, re-authentication timeouts, uh, cache re-authentication timeouts, or quiet period on that port. All right, so let's go back to our configuration here, and then we're going to configure the last one here is dynamic segmentation, which, you know, dynamic segmentation has multiple aspects of it, but our first phase here of uh, dynamic segmentation in Central is configuring user-based tunneling. So with that, we have uh, buckets here for the uh, gateway IP and backup gateway IP. Uh, one thing to note, there's a push for inclusivity, and we are working on changing a lot of the terminology in our products. Uh, so Central will be reflected. Looks like we've already got gateway cluster changed, and we're working on uh, renaming controller IP to gateway IP. So let's go ahead and put in our gateway IP, and we're going to use the reserve VLAN of 4000. So for user-based tunneling from the device level, you can bypass the source inter you You'll need to specify a source interface here. Um, so it's showing us here you need to have a source interface. You can do that from the multi-editor, or you can actually go in here to the source interface, and we have one already set. Uh, so you can do it by port, VLAN, lag, or address, and then you put in the IP address that you want to have. So uh, we already specified that in the, uh, the multi-editor, but we can also specify it here, and it would just overwrite what we've done in the multi-editor. And then we can save that configuration, and it should get pushed. Uh, and then when it's synchronized, we can actually go back and check. And our gateways are up. We're ready to go. So we can start authenticating clients for user-based tunneling. So going back here to our user roles, if we wanted to, now that we've uh, configured user-based tunneling, uh, we can actually select the user-based tunnel toggle. Uh, by default, we can only use the default zone, um, so we're not quite supporting multi-zone through the UI in uh, Central with this first phase here of uh, having user-based tunneling configuration in the UI. So we can only use the default zone. If you need to use multiple zones, use the multi-editor. You can configure all the, the multiple zones with the multi-editor, but uh, all we really need to do is turn on that toggle and then select the role, gateway role that we want to apply to that traffic, and then we can save it. And then that will save the user role onto the switch configuration. So another new enhancement uh, with Central 254 is in the multi-editor. Uh, so we can prevent configuration drift. So if you're maybe you're in a hurry, you opened up multiple tabs in the multi-editor on the same switch, and you're trying to make changes. Uh, say you make one change on uh, one switch, in the multi-editor, let's say here we're going to add in VLAN 300, and then we're going to save that. And then say we already have that open on another switch, so maybe we want to add in, uh, I don't know, VLAN 400. Let's go ahead and type that in, hit enter, and then save it. And then now we get a nice little uh, message here warning us saying that our configuration has changed outside the editor. Uh, so the configuration of one device has changed outside, probably through another editor or CLI, et cetera, since the beginning of this workflow uh, for this switch VSF UI stack. So we can either proceed to save or go back. So I don't want to change it, so I'm going to go back. I'll probably just close this tab and go with my original changes that I've pushed to my switch. 
Uh, another one is that we've replicated the same kind of um, CLI lockout that we've done with uh, AOS switch for many, many years. So if I go back to my CLI here, uh, say I do a show Aruba Central, I can see that I'm connected. Uh, I'm in, say I want to make a change from the CLI, I'm in config mode. But if I do a question mark and try to see what the available commands are, there's really nothing I can do because I'm locked out. So if I try to go to uh, maybe run the interface command and I do a tab complete or a question mark, there's no match command because we're locked out with Aruba Central. So what I can do is I can go to Aruba Central. You, know, you only want to use this if you're desperately needing to make a change in the CLI. Uh, you can disable your Aruba Central support and then you will have full access. Your CLI comes back and you can make uh, changes if you need to from the CLI. So for this purpose, I want to stay with Ruby Central, so I'm going to re-enable that. But that's how if you need to get into the CLI in a pinch, you can do that. Just be careful. You don't want to make changes on the switch that haven't been made in Central uh, because Central will overwrite any configuration changes you make once you, so say you lose connection to Central and you need to restore that, figure out what's going on so you can get into the switch CLI and try to figure out what uh, where the error happened. Uh, maybe you uh, changed a interface into another VLAN. Maybe it's the interface that needs to access Central and it has certain VLAN connectivity, say on VLAN 10, you change it to VLAN 15, now you don't have access to Central anymore. Switch is showing up as not connected, but you need to go ahead and make that change. What you'll first want to do is make the change in central, then go to the switch CLI here, disable that, and then make that switch, uh, that change on the switch as well so it matches. And so once uh, the switch uh, can get back to central, uh, it will overwrite the configuration, any configuration changes that you've made. So you want to make sure whatever configuration changes you want to make are reflected in central. That's the, the key there to avoid any, any uh, big heartache. So going back to Central, we've also improved in our firmware uh, bucket here. If we want to select firmware and make any changes to that, uh, we've added in the ability to, to copy firmware now to the secondary partition. And uh, say you want to go to the secondary partition, you want to um, say a specific uh, CX build here. Uh, so we're not quite to 10.8 here. Uh, you can select time zone of the switch. You can actually uh, specify a time zone that you want to uh, to do it at a later date on, and you can specify which uh, either the primary or the secondary partition. And then when you select automatically reboot, it will reboot to the partition that you selected there. So uh, it's important to note which partition you want to load new code on and that you have the right version of code that you want to load it to. And if you're doing it now or at a later date, that you have the appropriate uh, time zone as well. Um, you can also, if your switch is in a different location, you can select device local time. Uh, if you want to schedule it it'll, at a later date, you know, at a specific date uh, at the switch's time zone, you can just say device local time. And then Central will uh, upgrade, schedule the upgrade firmware upgrade according to the devices local time that's set. Those are the main enhancements I think that we have with uh, Central 254 coming out. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, appreciate uh, any feedback you want to leave in the comments. Would, uh, we would uh, greatly appreciate that. Thank you very much.